Mm. And it's a sustainable protein. It's the protein of the future. I grew up in Washington Heights. So if you wanted something Washington to eat in the middle of the night, you had to put the lights roaches. on and you had to wait like 20 minutes to let the roaches scatter. Right. And when the roaches are away, it was safe to go in and make a sandwich. Oh, yeah. right. So this is taking me to a bad place. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, everybody? I'm Willie Cologne, and he is. Lodge, what's up, Willie? And this is Beats and Eats. We're on Stanton at Ludlow at Al Burrow. Chef Junior's in the back. We got Angie Martinez on deck. We're going to get large in the kitchen. Cook it. Yeah. Are you staying? Get going. Yeah, some of us have to work, man. You do that intro bullshit. Let's, 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 let's just go. Let's, let's just go. Welcome on back to Beats and Eats. I'm in the uh, impeccable kitchen of El Sombrero in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. I'm here with chef and owner, Junior, and I'm also here with his head chef, Jose, who I'm starting to develop a little bit of a friendship with. And we're about to start the, uh, the prep process for the appetizer round. We're gonna do a vegetarian taco for Miss Angie Martinez. We're gonna top that with a little bit of uh, broiled bassa. And while Jose is preparing the tortilla, it's a simple masa tortilla. These guys do it a little bit differently, though, for the vegetarian taco. The masa has... Wheat la coche, wheat la coche. Wheat la coche, which is, I, I pedal smut for a living at Barstool Sports. So that's corn smut. It's a fungus that grows on the outside of corn. It provides a little funkiness, a little more depth of flavor. So uh, Jose is pressing them out right now, a fresh tortilla, there's nothing like it. He's gonna cook it on the flat top afterwards. Then we're gonna stuff the shit out of it with vegetables and eventually gonna top it with a nice broiled bassa. Chef, and I just wanna mention right away while Jose's doing his thing, yes. we went to high school together. Small world. It's, it's fucking One crazy. year apart. <laughs> so the cuisine here at El Sombrero, you'd say it's what? I would say Latin American would be the best uh, way to explain Perfect. it. Perfect, a little bit for everybody. Yes. So it's gonna be a real simple, Simple taco, right? Yes. I mean, it's, it's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try to make it as delicious yep. as possible. Fresh ingredients. Yeah, it seems like we spent half our lives trying to keep vegetarians happy. And then the <laughs> second dish that we're gonna do for Willie is also gonna be a taco. We're gonna switch that up a little bit. Yes. And we're gonna do. We're gonna do uh, grasshopper tacos. Champulines. Champulines. Right, right. Which he's not gonna like. So Willie is a I big know, guy. It's okay. Yeah, he, he will eat your fucking foot. But when it comes to anything that's weird, he gets a little bit squeamish and he complains. Who doesn't? You yeah, know, but I that's okay. So. But right. they're but they're delicious. They're Absolutely. very good. Absolutely, I'm a big delicious. fan of them, so I'm looking forward to that preparation too. The masa tortillas just came off the flat top. It's going to be a vegetarian taco, as we had talked about, topped with a little bit of masa fish that we have marinated in. What do we marinate this in, Chef? We marinate that with uh, fresh garlic, fresh uh, thyme, and uh, fresh oregano. A little bit of a neutral oil. Pop that underneath the uh, broiler with some fish stock. With some fish stock. Wang uh, wang. And white wine. Oh, white wine and fish stock. Yes, white wine and fish stock. Perfect. We'll get that going, and we'll get the uh, the, ve uh, the vegetables going in the pan. Okay. We'll be ready to put together a hell of a taco in a couple of seconds. Spinach. Oh. A little bit of corn. Poblano. Poblanos. Gonna add some heat. Uh, Those are the comedians we were talking about. Okay. Uh, just give it a quick toss. All right. So when you go the veggies. First of all. Nice and easy. First, a little base of the. Uh, of the spinach, spinach, the poblanos look like they're gonna give them a little bit of heat, not too much. And on top of it, here comes the bassa. Mm -hmm. And how do you top this thing off? A little cilantro, fresh yes. cilantro. Yep, and that's it. So what we have here is we have our pescatarian fish tacos. What's up, everyone? I'm with the iconic, Ooh. the voice of... Sorry, sorry. Probably Large. need one of these. Jesus. <gasps> I love this show already. Oh. Thank you. I know you tend to spill. Right. And Thank you. Like I was saying, I'm joined <laughs> by the voice of New York, the queen of radio. You can catch her on Power 105. She is absolutely amazing. A New York Times bestseller, my voice. Check it out. The one and only, Angie Martinez. What's going on? Hi, Thanks for my... being here, man. I know you're busy. I'm a big, very big vibe person. Okay. And so I tend to do things based on a vibe. Nice. 
And so I feel like the, the few times that we've hung out, I great felt vibe. a good, great vibe. Yeah. And so when they called and said it was you, I was like, absolutely. A little backstory on you, and you can clean me up as I go. Yeah. Uh, raised a little bit in the Washington Heights. Yes, my family's from Washington Heights. Right, moved to Brooklyn, mm -hmm. right? You were a rebel without a cause, so mama shipped you to Miami. She did. Right, uh, you started uh, radio in Miami, yes. interning. Yes. And then he was like, all right, I'm done with Miami. Let me go back home and take over New York. Yeah. And it's been a hell of a ride ever since. Yeah, I came back to New York. I was 18, and I started at Hot 97 as an intern when I was 18. You were on the scene when Big Pac and then when, you know, the, the East West Coast thing was going oh, on. Yeah, and everybody. when it was like New York was Wu really. Wu Tang, Mom Wu -Tang. Tang. I want to talk about <laughs> uh, one of your breakout interviews was with Tupac. Um, mm -hmm. Do you miss him? Oh, God, yes. Yeah. Losing somebody that had so much potential for greatness. Right. It was kind of your breakthrough interview, if you will. You it was. Right. I, I wound up not airing the whole thing because I was afraid for of, pe people's lives. <laughs> like, I really oh, thought man. if I would have played it as it was because he was so angry at the time. I think we're in a time in hip-hop right now where I know I'm an old head, so I'm always listening to Pac and Jay-Z and all these guys. Uh, kind of the, the new wave of hip-hop is somewhat... I, people aren't feeling it. You seem to be... There's a lot of people feeling it. But there's some people that the aren't. The old heads don't feel it. Right, so call me an old head. <laughs> and that was, like you mentioned, that was kind of the peak of hip-hop. And then obviously, um, you know, DMX and everybody else... But you have along. to look at it through the lens of a 16-year-old or an 18-year-old and what they find interesting or funny in it. If you think about us when we were 16 and 18, we were listening to, you know, Onyx, who Takashi 6 ix 9 sounded very much like Onyx. Very much like Onyx I can go there with you, yeah. Or if you listen to some of the funnier, like, a blue face or somebody like that, and you think about, like, a, the Humpty Dance, or you think about Akinelli or people like that, we had lanes like that. Right. You know what I mean? And I think we forget that. I'm going to throw you a couple <laughs> names, and the first thing that comes to mind when I say their names. Right? You ready? Yes, yeah, shoot. R. Kelly. Speechless. Unfortunate. Yeah, unfortunate. You know? Jay-Z. Iconic and just a good soul, like a good person. People don't talk about that part enough. It's like they give him his accolades and rightfully so for all the things he's done, but he's like a good guy also. You know what I mean? He looks out for his people. He cares about the culture. He does things quietly. You know? President Obama. My forever president. Super charming, super yeah. like magnetic. Aside from being, you know, a great leader. Yeah, if President Obama walked out of my mama's bedroom, I'm like, okay, I get it, mom. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> I'm like, I you get did it. that, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Uh, Tasha 6'9". Also unfortunate. I don't think he thought he was going to live past yeah, a certain sure. age, but he was smart. He's a marketing genius, and I think he bumped his head, and he's, uh, and he's paying for it. Fat um, Joe. Fat Joe's the greatest. <laughs> he's just the greatest. You know, we've been friends for over, Ever. Tw over, yeah. over 20 years, and he's always had my back, and I always have his. My last one for you, Mary J. Blige. That's but my I, sister. I remember listening to an interview you did with her, and it was right after her recent divorce, and it didn't turn into an interview. It turned into like, yo, sis, I got you. What I appreciate about the interview, you you separated the entertainment and you you really came from a place of sisterhood. Well, I have a real sisterhood with her. It's yeah. not from nowhere. And she deserves like all the praise. She deserves to be loved and she's had a hard time. So she knows, you know, I just wanted her to know that. I got you. People, yeah, people yeah. love her and we got her back. Before I let you go, what would this current uh, Angie Martinez tell young up and coming Angie Martinez? Woo! Um... This is to maybe go on vaca some more vacations. <laughs> I wish I just would have like calmed down and enjoyed the ride a little bit more. But I'm doing that now. You're awesome. You're amazing too. Thank you. The Voice of New you York. You didn't drink any of your margarita. Oh, I'm gonna pound it as soon as we get off. Mm. Get off here. Uh, the Voice of New York, the Queen of Radio. Are we gonna eat? Soon. Oh, it's when coming. does that part happen? Because I heard <laughs> there was gonna be both. Angie Martinez. <laughs> <laughs>All right, so the second appetizer that we're making today is the one where I'm gonna to try to fuck Willie a little bit. So we're gonna do uh, grasshoppers or chapolinas. Chapolinas, yes. And we're gonna uh, make a chapolinas taco. I've had grasshoppers, you know, many times. Uh, and these are just roasted, salted grasshoppers, as you would see, like your garden variety grasshopper, which are delicious. They taste like a, like a giant sunflower seed, right? Delicious. And it's an excellent source of protein. But what you guys do here, which I think is interesting, is you take your salsa, I guess like just the salsa roja, like tomatillo. Tomatillo, serranos, onions, uh, fresh garlic. Right, and then you pound the shit out of your uh, grasshoppers in a mortar and pestle. You mix it with the salsa, so on top of the actual 
Chapolina is taco. Was the Chapolina is salsa on top? Exactly. Of Would you like to try? Of course, you're, you're damn right it is. I'm, I'm standing here like an idiot. Can okay, I get in here? Try. Yeah. Is that okay? I'm looking forward to having uh, to seeing Willie having that first bite. So actually, first of all, it's got a little bit of heat to it, but it's delicious. And you add more texture to it with the ground up grasshoppers. It's fucking delicious. So now what we're going to do is we're going to saute the uh, the chapolinas with just a little bit of sofrito. What else goes into there? Sofrito, uh, the champolines, a uh, little salt, okay, and, perfect. And, and lemon. Simple. We'll get the grasshoppers in there. Grasshoppers in nice, there. healthy uh, thing of grasshoppers. So we had the champolines come out of the uh, the frying pan with the sofrito, a little bit of that uh, salsa roja that we ground in there with the actual grasshoppers. Finish it off with a little bit of Mexican avocado, some chopped cilantro. And what you have here is the champolinos tacos at El Sombrero. And this is going from here right into Willie Colon's mouth. 100%, uh -huh. I'm looking right forward to it. We'll thank get it on, just gotta get, get, get a little bit emotional, it's okay. It's <laughs> yeah. all right, no, don't let go till I let go. <laughs> Welcome on back to Beats and Eats. This is the pick your poison round, the appetizer round. Normally I bring out a couple of dishes and have Willie and our esteemed guest pick one of them blindly, but I know Angie has a couple of dietary concerns. So <laughs> yeah, like I don't one enjoy one one fried and, testicles. And, fri <laughs> and flat out she does not trust me. So I'm gonna start out with something specifically for Angie that's extremely safe. I was enjoy, in the, I was in the uh, kitchen with Junior, so we cooked this up ourselves. Uh, this is their traditional hot sauces, Angie, before you hit it with it. Uh, mild, medium, and hot. So uh, jalapeno, serrano, habanero, and that does bring the heat. But we made a pescatarian taco, and it's a, it's a medley. It's a little bit of sauteed spinach, uh, roasted poblano peppers, uh, cremini mushrooms, a little bit of roasted corn. Nothing out of the ordinary, just tossing a sofrito. On top of Are it, you having some? you're gonna have one of them because okay. this is this is. I don't regular. know what I'm doing. Okay, so this is just gonna be a regular taco. On top of it is just a light, flaky white fish called the basa. We roasted it off with a little bit of uh, white wine and a little bit of fish stock. So there's nothing out of the ordinary in this. There's nothing hidden like I did with DJ whatever with the eyeball and Sorry, stuff DJ, that day. Whatever. This is I would never do that to you because I respect you. I you don't sure? respect whatever. <laughs> I was a little nervous because he was telling me what he did in the past shows, and so I had a little bit of anxiety about. Uh, what could be in my food. So That's this I would I would urge you to try it. I urge you to try that too okay. before your stuff comes out. So there's out. no eyeball in here. There's no eyeball and the only thing that they do different <laughs> with their uh, salsa verde is they do put some mashed uh, avocado in it. The only thing that's weird about it and I did mention was that they put this wheat la coche in it, which is a, a corn smut. It's like a fungus that grows on the outside of corn. Me. They call it Mexican, um, Mexican truffle. So it'll have a tiny bit of tartness, the actual tortilla itself. That's hot, the sauce. The, the, the sauce is very hot. Yeah. So that's the only kind of different flavor though. that you're gonna have, but otherwise straightforward and delicious. I'm gonna I leave you with this. your plate. It's not bad, right? Spinach I, and everything. No, I enjoyed this. So this I is the second one, and they're tiny. But here's three of these. So these are called champolines. Uh -oh. uh, also another Mexican uh, uh -oh. traditional taco dish. And what it is, it's the new white meat uh, from Mexico. So it's grasshoppers. So what they do is they oh, take grasshoppers, no. they're farm-raised grasshoppers, they're gorgeous little sons of bitches, and they fry them up very simply seasoned with salt. So if you were to have them just to pop, it would, it would taste almost like a, uh, like a sunflower seed. Yeah. But what they do here is they toss them in a pan lightly with just a little bit of sofrito. <laughs> And then they uh, and they put it on a homemade masa corn tortilla. It's, uh, it's horrible. With a little bit it's of horrible. with a little bit of avocado, and then the salsa. I have so much anxiety. Is it salsa roja? <laughs> <laughs> I have anxiety right. about this. He but, does this to me every week. Yeah. Would you try this at all? I wish I was one of those type of people that would be adventurous and do this with him and, and try it with him. But I could not wrap my brain around. I, this is, I have a thing with insects, man. I would absolutely eat the avocado you would. that's on top. But you wouldn't because the avocado has a little bit of salsa that has a little bit of cricket in it. The salsa has cricket yeah, in so it? Yes, uh, the salsa also has ground cricket in so it. So I'm going to be support for Willie. Right. Okay. So I'm going to eat the closest one for us. Yeah, that's most. That's Man, I feel luck. like it's moving in the taco large. No, these things have been dead for cricket. It's like fucking all this shit. <laughs> it's going to be crunchy. I know. Ah! Oh! Oh! How is it? I got to be honest. I absolutely hated it. Nah, B. No. You know what it is? It's your mind. It's my mind. Because if I didn't know what it was, I'd probably eat it. They, they still got a little fight to them because I'm tasting like the back legs. They got a leg stuck to your thumb. I know. It's like Jiminy Cricket, B. 
It is like too many cricket. And I know when you don't enjoy something because you tend to call me B. Right. <laughs> he reverts. Yeah, he so reverts. It's absolutely fine. But I'm glad that you tried it. Right. All right? And I'm, and I'm happy that you didn't try it and we left him out here all no, alone. No, I can't. Are you sure no more? I just want to make sure you have enough. You uh, have thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah. So that's Pick Your Poison for this week. And we're going to move on and go to the uh, to main course. There's more food? Back in the kitchen uh, with uh, Chef Junior. I, I, first of all, I appreciate all your hospitality today, buddy. It's, it's nice a to pleasure up. having all of you and your crew and uh, Angie. Angie's having such a good time, apparently she's not leaving. Oh. So now we're gonna have to do four main courses. We're gonna leave uh, the bacon part out of Angie's, but otherwise, yes. give me an idea of what we're making for the main course. Okay, what we're gonna make for the main course is basically uh, fresh salmon. Uh, we just uh, put a little bit of a garlic. Uh, with a little olive oil, salt, and pepper. So this salmon is eventually going to be mofungo crusted salmon. That's maduros and bacon mashed. A little bit of the breadcrumbs right on top. We're just going to place it in the salamander so that it gets nice and brown. Add just a little bit more olive oil. What we have here is the coconut piquillo sauce Roasted pepper and coconut, that's piquillo. The mofungo crusted salmon in a piquillo coconut sauce. We're gonna chow down now. It's an excellent job. <laughs> I don't mind kissing you, right? My high school friend. All right, welcome back to Beats and Eats. We're gonna go on to the main course. We had a pretty good uh, pick your poison round. Yes, sir. Right, you were a trooper with that. You not so much. But for the main course, everyone's gonna have the same thing. We're joined here now with Chef Junior, who is the owner and chef of El Sombrero. Angie was not supposed to be in this segment, but she you can't get rid of her. We leave. love her. I won't leave. Yeah, yes. I just won't leave. So we call <laughs> you think you're gonna have this? What is this, mofongo and crusted salmon and you're gonna send exactly. me to work? That's exactly it. So we call oh, the police, but until they come here, she's gonna hang out and eat some salmon with us. So this is just like she said, a pan seared salmon that's crusted with mofongo. Typically mofongo is when they mash the uh, the savory tostones. These guys use the sweet so maduros. The sweet maduros. Yes. Oh, maduro. Yes. Yeah, so they, they mash these with uh, with bacon. We did one without bacon, because I know you don't dig on swine. I'm not into the swine. Yep, it's just on a simple uh, bed of spinach, roasted corn, and then the sauce underneath it is a uh, piquillo coconut sauce. Piquillo right? coconut sauce. So that's it. Everybody uh, dig in. I'm starving. I can smell it tastes better than crickets. Chef, this is fantastic. It's a complete dish. It's really enjoying so it. so good. One of my favorites. Now it's time for eight is enough when we ask eight crazy questions. Now since Angie is here, oh. we're gonna divide it. Four and four, all right? You ready to go? Yes, sir. I got a side order of crickets in case you. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> we can you get That's all you. That's all you. That's all you. Crickets are sometimes you can't just have one, so. When it was time for the main course and the side uh, dish of grasshoppers came out, there was this impulse to at least go get one more because I don't like to be a punk in front of large. Um, but I gotta be honest. I'm over it. Chef, <laughs> stay here, Chef. Yes, sir. Uh, what's one food you could eat every day? Skirt steak, uh, churrasco. Oh, really? Yes. That sounds good. And ah. what's one sound that makes you cringe? I could tell you 10, but I'll tell you one. <laughs> uh, pencil on a paper. Really? Oh, I want to like, kill myself. Like, I can't take it. What's one thing you would love to yell in public and get away with? Just randomly say, go fuck yourself. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> Edge. Yeah. What's your biggest problem with the opposite sex? This is not, this is not a quick answer. This is an all day conversation. Right. <laughs> your biggest problem? You don't listen. Men don't listen? No. Why? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> What's one food you can eat in the shower? I don't, I've never thought about that. Uh, in the shower, uh, fruit. Fruit. I don't know. I mean, so I, you're the strawberries I, and bubbles guy. No, no. I mean, you know, of course you have to have a bottle of wine or something. Okay. You know, so I, I, I just, I, I <laughs> never had that question asked. Now I'm all, on my way home. I'm gonna be thinking, what can I eat while I'm taking right. a shower? And if there's one person to make you a birthday cake naked, who would it be? Excuse me? <laughs> they're gonna make it naked, or they're yeah. gonna come out of it naked? No, they're gonna make it naked. That would have to be my man, because if I say anybody else, <laughs> he's not that type of it's dude. Like he doesn't think it's funny. <laughs> right. I don't get none of those celebrity passes or okay. anything like that. I no. believe you get a hall pass since you. No. No hall pass. Not in my house. I respect it. <laughs> I respect it. For you, 
What's one food you have to eat when you're stressed out? Ceviche. Really? I love ceviche because it's light. If I'm stressed out, I cannot eat heavy. Really? I, so I would have a ceviche. Who's your favorite, favorite now? human being? Do you mean like including my family or outside of my family? Uh, family's too close to home. Let's go outside the family. Okay, this is too stressful. <laughs> My family. I mean, you did interview Obama. You did interview Jay-Z. Obama is up there, boy. Right. Thought I was just here for a lovely meal. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to be Can we go with Obama? Out. All right, fine. Let's go with Obama. We're going to go with Obama. Aside from my family. <laughs> Outside of the fam. And that is, it is enough. We have such an amazing show. Thank you to Angie Martinez, the voice of New York. To Chef Junior, who's doing an amazing job Whoa. here at Elson Borough. We got- That was a long shoot. You One of us deserves a drink. But that's my- Is that you coconut You much, you don't get much. I need- you never gave me a sip, but, and this is a team. Focus. Beats and eats. You don't like to share, Peace. and I don't get why. <laughs>